CBS Daytime will be back Monday when the young and the restless heats up. Hi everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. Welcome to the Road to the Final Four, powered by Pontiac. CBS Sports is proud to mark its silver anniversary year of broadcasting the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Tournament. From the tip-off of the first round, moments from now, until the National Championship in Indianapolis on Monday night, the 3rd of April, you will catch all of the action right here on CBS, the official home of March Madness. Joining me to share in the enjoyment of the many shining moments that Tournament 2006 will produce, you may be excited. Nobody's more excited <laughs> than Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. Ready to Absolutely. get the ball in the air and let these young student athletes show us what they've got between the lines. Ready to be surprised. You don't know where it's coming from, but somewhere we got surprises in store. All right, guys, let's set the lineup for this busy opening Thursday of the NCAA tournament. Just to prevent any confusion, we remind you, the four brackets are named for the sites of the regional finals. Atlanta. Oakland, Washington, D.C., and Minneapolis. And we'll begin at 20 past the hour with Seton Hall taking on Wichita State. At 12.25 Eastern, Wisconsin-Milwaukee clashes with Oklahoma. Then, at 12.40, Pacific tangles with Boston College. Now, the second wave of action will tip at about 2.40 Eastern time. Among the four games in that time slot, most of you will see Alabama battle Marquette. Also, Winthrop will challenge second seed Tennessee. Now, rounding out the daytime schedule at about 5 o'clock Eastern time, Time, some of you will see Belmont play UCLA. Let's start in that early time slot in the game coming up. Clark Seton Hall and number seven seed Wichita State. You know what? Both of these teams are evenly matched. They've got good presence inside. Paul Miller and Kyle Wilson for Wichita State. Kelly Whitney for Seton Hall. Also in the backcourt, you've got experience there with Donald Copeland for Seton Hall. I really look for the Pirates to be able to work through their adversity that they've encountered all season long. They've made, had some big wins. I like them as a 10 seed to perhaps move on in advance. Seth, there's another 10-7 matchup there in Alabama going up against Marquette. First of all, the first of many disagreements. I like Wichita <laughs> State in that game, but I also like Marquette to beat Alabama. That point guard matchup is going to be critical. It'll be interesting to see how the freshman Dominic James handles it for Marquette. And, of course, Marquette has a player in Steve Novak, Greg. He can shoot this team over anybody in the tournament. All right, guys. The road to the Final Four here on CBS will continue after this. Welcome back to the Road to the Final Four, powered by Pontiac. Let's take a quick look at tonight's primetime lineup. Our coverage begins 7 Eastern time. Many of you will see Xavier and Gonzaga featuring the nation's leading scorer, Adam Morrison. Then at about 9.30 Eastern time, our doubleheader games will include Texas A&M against surprising Syracuse. We'll also get our first look at the overall number one seed as Duke takes to the court against Southern. You know, that Air Force, Illinois game, Clark, uh, it's, it's Air Force's chance to see if they can stand up to Illinois and also to beat back all these things people are saying about them, about they shouldn't even be in the tournament. Well, I tell you what, this team, when you take a look at their numbers and how they play, they're number one in the nation in points allowed defense. 54 points a game is all opponents get against them. But more importantly than that, they make nine threes a game, Greg, and they shoot 40% from behind the three-point line. This is a confident team. I think this team deserved to be here. It wasn't based on numbers that got them in. It was based on style of play and difficulty they are as the difficulty they present as an opponent, and I think they're going to give Illinois all they want, but I still think the Illini will prevail, but Air Force is going to show themselves worthy here today. And Seth, in the A&M Syracuse game, everybody's wondering whether or not the Orange are just going to continue the run that, that carried them to the Big East title. Yeah, I'm wondering if there might be some type of emotional hangover left over from the Big East tournament, and remember, they played pretty far over their heads, so can they maintain that intensity is my question, but I'll tell you what, Texas A&M also played some very good basketball down the stretch, and the Aggies are really going to want to try to control the tempo in this game. They'd like to see the score end up being in the 40s, and if they can do that, I think they can get them. I'm riding the hot hand of Jerry, Jerry McNamara. You're, you're a bandwagon guy. Yes, you just no, when someone gets I'm high, rolling right with there. the hot 
player there. A hot player. All right, All right guys, we'll the road to the final four here on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Welcome to the road to the final four powered by Pontiac everyone as we embark upon our 25th consecutive year of March Madness here on CBS. I'm Greg Gumbel joined by Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis of Sports Illustrated. I think it's funny our whole studio watches Clark the closer we get to tip off because this is like Christmas. for Oh you. it is it really is the blustering about brackets over the misplaced making of mountains out of molehills about who's in the tournament and who's not over. It's two rings one ball 10 players it is time to hoop and find out who can get it done between the lines. I can't wait. I have nothing left to say. That about, that about covers it. No, I, good I, just, I can't follow that. I no way. To, I just want to say what blustering about brackets. <laughs> Let's quickly run down the eight first round day games about to come your way. Seton Hall and Wichita State will tip off the action at 20 past the hour. Wisconsin Milwaukee will battle Oklahoma and Pacific tangles with Boston College. The second wave of action features four games. A tip at about 240 Eastern time among the teams playing. You will get to see Tennessee the second seed in the Washington bracket and also Florida the three seed in the Minneapolis bracket and Clark that Winthrop Tennessee game the Tennessee volunteers seeded number two people all over the country are saying that's too high a seeding for them I'm sure the volunteers will make a little use of that I'm certainly sure they will Greg they will use that as fuel and motivation I like Winthrop not because of where Tennessee is seated but because they're a quality team they're experienced they're talented they defend they can score in a number of different ways and I think that team is very comfortable with this particular matchup yeah I've never seen a 15 seed by the way get more people picking them to win a basketball game but I'm looking for Wisconsin Milwaukee to take down Oklahoma right here in this first set of games I'll tell you what nobody in the Big 12 plays the kind of style that Wisconsin Milwaukee he does they have four returning starters from the team that went to the sweet 16 so they actually have more tournament experience and they have the big bodies inside I think that can counter what Oklahoma does if they can get uh, Terrell Everett to make a couple of mistakes there convert it into transition your first upset he's valid, valid points all valid points all but right, you, well, you you digressed Before a bit and disagree. forgot to mention that Oklahoma does have four seniors that play Terrell Everett's a terrific playmaker Taj Gray Kevin book out inside can get it done Calvin Sampson an experienced tournament coach be better I like the be Sooners from from the standpoint Ready. of their experience and they have they've won some close games they've worked through, through some adversity all of that plays in favor of Oklahoma in my opinion all right guys about the late games now how about San Diego State Indiana yeah this is gonna be my nighttime upset special I love Steve Fisher's ball club they have a very athletic front line with Marcus Slaughter in the post and a big time scoring guard in Brandon Heath also a little bit of a question about Indiana the health of Robert Vaden he injured his ankle during the Big Ten tournament they say he practiced and he's going to play but one thing that Indiana has done is sometimes they have lapses defensively and San Diego State does have the athletes so when you see these first round games sometimes the higher seeded team has an advantage at least athletically Indiana is not going to have that advantage and the Aztecs will prevail Clark He's well that's interesting head. I'm not going to go <laughs> totally disagreeing with you here but one of the things that jumped out at me when you looked at some of these double digit seed teams Iona Utah State Texas A&M they're proficient offensively that bodes well for them to challenge the higher seeded teams but if you're looking for upsets teams that can win as double digit seeds I think Seton Hall has a chance I certainly think Alabama and I really like the Winthrop Eagles to perhaps maybe shock the world a bit. I like the fact that Seth has an upset special for every hour of the day. <laughs> Game time approaches. We'll be back along the road to the final four in just a moment. First round of play in the 2006 NCAA tournament is about to commence with Seton Hall meeting Wichita State in Greensboro. Those of you expecting Wisconsin Milwaukee against Oklahoma will get you to the start of that game at 1225 Eastern. Similarly, those slated to see Pacific Boston College at 1240 will bring you there in time for the tip off. Enjoy the tournament, everyone, here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's basketball championship is sponsored by Singular. Coca-Cola Zero, Lexus, and by Bud Light.
Welcome everyone to the first round of the NCAA tournament from the Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro. All Pirates, the seventh seed Wichita State Shockers, all part of the Washington DC Regional. Lineups for both teams today for Seton Hall, Donald Copeland, the leading scorer, and Paul Miller for Wichita State, their top scoring player. There's Lewis Orr, who is in his fifth year as the coach, a former Big East Coach of the Year and the current Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year, is sixth year head coach Mark Turgeon. Our officials today, Eddie Hightower, Eric Curry, and Lamar Simpson. With his back to you there is Eddie Hightower. He has officiated 10 Final Fours, and this is his 21st NCAA tournament. And our game today brought to you in HDTV by, Ho by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for the high-definition television and mobile media. And we are underway. Well, happy NCAA tournament, Kevin. We're, we're going here. Wichita State comes in at 24 and 8. And inside and down low, Paul Miller, the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year, gets the first two. And that's where Wichita State wants to go and establish him inside. It'll be interesting to see if Seton Hall tries to double team him. Man to man defense here for Wichita State. That's Nutter from outside. He is one of the top shooting players in the Big East. Each of these teams defensively, primarily man-to-man. -man. They don't really pressure you hard on the perimeter, try to contain you. And Miller is a guy who obviously, as you can see right there, can step out and shoot the basketball. This is Donald Copeland, Jr. with the ball. Now Jamal Nutter just took the shot. He's a junior from Bloomfield, New Jersey. And outside, everybody has been hitting. That was Brian Lang, a sophomore from Bronx, New York. Well, if there are nerves associated with this first game of this NCAA tournament, Kevin, it hasn't been reflected in the shooting. Everybody looks pretty comfortable right at the moment. This is Pryor to Wilson. Now Kusnar with a drive into Delmeyer, and that is a charge. Wipe it away. In a matter of moments, we'll be taking some of you to the Oklahoma-Wisconsin-Milwaukee game. And later on, others will see Pacific against fourth seed Boston College. Donald Copeland with the ball was the fifth best assist man in the Big East Conference this past season. And Nutter saves it from going out of bounds and called the timeout as he was flying into my partner, Dan Bonner. <laughs> it's dangerous over here. So early on, some hot shooting. Both teams have hit both their shots so far. We're tied. In New York, the tournament underway. We'll keep track of Seton Hall, Wichita State for you. But those of you ticketed for Jacksonville action, time to send you to Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville. Wisconsin, Milwaukee versus Oklahoma. Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, and Stephen Bardo. All right, Greg. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament does bring you to Jacksonville. We're in the Minneapolis bracket. Wisconsin-Milwaukee, the 11th seed out of the Horizon League, taking on the Sooners from the Big 12. There you see the bracket. The winner of this game will advance to take on the winner of the Florida-South Alabama game, which is game two of our afternoon session here in Jacksonville, Florida. Rob Jeter, 37 years young and 91, was a part of a Division III national championship playing for Wisconsin Platteville. Bo Ryan was the coach at that time. He takes over for Bruce Pearl. His club made it to the Sweet 16 a year ago. Tiger McCoy, Tucker, and Davis, along with Hill. Bookout, Taj Gray, David Godbold, along with Terrell Everett, who's a real key today, and Michael Neal for Oklahoma. And there's Kelvin Sampson in 2002, guided his team into the Final Four in Atlanta. This is his 12th NCAA tournament. He has done a marvelous job since coming to Norman. Our officials for today's game, J.D. Collins, Joe DeMeo, and Jerry Meter, alongside Mike Jaminski, and our newest partner and family member here on CBS Sports, Stephen Bardo. It's great to have you with us.
Wisconsin Milwaukee wins the tap and Taggart looks outside. Look for UW Milwaukee running the flex offense. Boo Davis, young man from Chicago, transferred from Olney Junior College, a number of players from that school participating for Wisconsin Milwaukee. And there's the pressure leading to a turnover. Davis again. And Stephen, if UW Milwaukee is, is more successful scoring the basketball, they're going to be able to get into that pressure, which they want to do against Oklahoma. Everett comes back with the answer. Oklahoma, a large team out of the Big 12. 25 consecutive postseason appearances. That does not just mean the NCAA tournament. There have been a few NITs sprinkled in, going all the way back to the Billy Tubbs era back in the 80s. There's an offensive foul. It'll go the other way to Oklahoma. You see right now the frenetic pace of the game is to the liking of Milwaukee. Everett was able to get the jumper down on the offensive end, but Oklahoma has been sped up here at the very beginning of the ball game. That plays in the hands of the Panthers. Yeah, they want to make it a possessions game, don't they? I mean, they want more possessions in this game. Well, I like the idea, too, Tim, that getting out and pressing, it's an early game. It gets you into the game quicker. You know, you can expend some energy and then get loose a little faster. There's the lob into Taj Gray. He's immediately doubled, and the Horizon League champions a year ago beat Alabama and BC to reach the Sweet 16. And in fact, Tucker had 32 in a losing effort against your uh, Illinois team, Bardo. Uh, he was tough. Quite an accomplished player and does it always. Tiger, senior from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, uses the glass, and it's five to two. Well, and, and right now, Oklahoma, early on, you'd think they'd own the paint with the big guys up front, but uh, Milwaukee very aggressive in attacking the rim. Now, a lot of times, Mike, when you're playing against a team that likes to press like Milwaukee, you want to make them pay with layups. But Oklahoma doesn't handle the ball well enough besides Everett to really make that happen. And you see the turnover story. Three possessions and two turnovers for Oklahoma. Gray trying to keep it alive. Quick outlet by Hill. He gets it into Tucker's hands. Book out, grabs the rebound for Oklahoma. Yeah, it's interesting in many ways, Bruce Pearl has two teams in the tournament this year. <laughs> <laughs> These guys last year and uh, Tennessee this year. What a rejection. Jason McCoy swatting it away and Tucker on the other end, count it, and the foul. And you notice what's gonna happen. As we watch the play from McCoy, he starts the fast break. Loves to come from the weak side. But the partisan crowd will start to favor Milwaukee because they play a, a, a fan-friendly style of play. You know the Florida Gator fans kind of liking this up-tempo. Yeah, I think they may be thinking matchups. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I think the key, too, there defensively, if Tiger can just lay on guys inside and not let them elevate, it allows McCoy to come from the weak side and get blocked. Tucker uh, completes the old-fashioned three-point play, and Wisconsin-Milwaukee's press has been very effective early on. Neal on the other end. They finally break, and there's Bookout, the birthday boy. Kevin Bookout turns 23 today, and it's... There's a three-point shot. Lofted and missed. Flyer was the one to miss it. And here comes Copeland again by Martin down the lane. And picked up again by Paul Miller. Who's averaging six rebounds a game. McGeary off the bench, launching a three. Miller is there to clean it up. Martin inside for Wichita State. An 8 nothing run for the Shockers. And Wichita State, another thing they do very well is rebound the ball on the offensive end, plus 50 on the season in terms of offensive rebounding. And you can see right there, do a nice job rebounding in transition. That is another turnover for Seton Hall, and they are having a hard time holding on to it. Louis Orr's team has coughed it up three times. And inside here, Miller with the miss, and Marks on demand is free. Get the first three rounds live on your computer. Sign up early at NCAAsports.com slash MMOD. Milwaukee leads by six Tuesday on CBS. See why the unit has become TV's number one new show. Don't miss a new episode Tuesday after NCIS on CBS, America's number one network. Fellas, what we've seen already is uh, Rob Jeter really utilize his press to get tempo control. 
Yeah, they know that Oklahoma doesn't play anyone in the Big 12 that plays this style, and so they want to speed them up, try to get the ball out of the hands of Terrell Everett and make someone else beat them. And, and Stephen, also I think what's going to happen is they're going to have to take somebody off the offensive glass. I mean, in Oklahoma, they're a very good offensive rebounding team, but in order to get defensive transition, they're going to have to send people back, and it's going to hurt them along the front line. Dodd Bolt with the dump down, the book out, yes, and a foul. Strong move by Bookout, who has really been a warrior for Oklahoma since coming to Norman. Well, he's playing with a broken navicular bone in his left hand, but he is a load. He's a guy that they have a tough time matching up with uh, Milwaukee inside. And if Oklahoma can somehow make this a half court game and establish him, that's going to be to their liking. You know, you mentioned something, uh, Stephen, a moment ago about no one in the Big 12 playing a style like this. As Tiger loses it out of bounds, Oklahoma gets the ball back. Seth Davis mentioned that uh, in our studios back in New York before we got started here. And that's really what the NCAA tournament first round is all about. Just like you're saying, matchups, Tim. And, you know, also Milwaukee loves to take the fact that they're the lower seed oh, yeah. as momentum and motivation to get past the Sooners. And then the more efficient, Tim, that uh, Oklahoma is, it's going to be tougher for Milwaukee to run it, taking the ball out of the basket. Much easier to establish that tempo on misses. Well, that was a four-point trip for Bookout and the Sooners, even with the missed free throw. McCoy, very long and lean, takes it into the paint. Bookout retrieves it for Oklahoma. Sooners turned it over a couple of times in their first three possessions, but since then it's settled down just a bit. As Mike mentioned earlier, they got to the half court set and want to grind Milwaukee out. Neal getting it inside. Nice move. Todd Gray is uh, an incredibly gifted low post player. You can't give him the lane to the basket. Tiger got caught on the high side that time, went for the steal, and really was naked defensively. And Mike, they look, Milwaukee looks a little confused on their post defense because at, at times they're trying to total front, that time trying to 50% front. Four rebounds for Bookout already and six unanswered for the Sooners to climb back to a tie after being blitzed by the early press. The real deal, Neal leaves it on the iron and Bookout takes care of it. Andrew Gaines is out. Bradley into Wilson. Wilson a transfer from Illinois. Boy, what quick hands by Whitney. That's out of bounds. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Coming up, some of you will be going to the Pacific Boston College game. So seven on the shot clock, 14-0 on the play in the first half. Martin. Again, Martin. Kusnar. Bradley is in there. Out of bounds, fresh shot clock, Wichita State's ball. Boy, I'm telling you, Wichita State had some close looks at the basket. Now, they do a great job with the offensive reboundings, but for heaven's sakes, you've got to make shots like that. What a great job on the offensive boards, and that's without Miller in the game, and Miller now coming back in. And Kyle Wilson will check out for Wichita State. The Shockers are plus eight in rebounding already, and here is a foul away from the ball. And inside, and they will put it on Kuzan, a sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland. As you take a look at what's going to happen here in Greensboro, part of the bigger Washington, D.C. regional. Well, in that Wichita State Seton Hall game that you see uh, in right on your screen is part of the uh, Missouri Valley Big East uh, challenge that right. we have here in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Three games involving Missouri Valley teams versus Big East teams. Miller lost it. Guznard, and that is deflected, and some nice defense on the far side by Jamar Nutter of Seton Hall, but a foul is called on the play on Nutter. Well, he does a great job getting his hand on the basketball, but watch here. Nutter goes up, tits the ball, now he grabs yep. O'Geary and throws O'Geary out of the way, and the look of surprise. Now, that's, I, I, is his major theater? That is really a great act <laughs> over there. Wichita State's last appearance in the NCAAs back in 1988. Their last win, 1981. Oh, what a nice move inside and rejected beautifully by Brian Lang. You talked about his athleticism, seen right there. Well, that's twice in this particular possession that he's blocked the shot. Kelly Whitney from Chicago, all Big East second team. 
That is excellent defense by Martin. Obviously, Wichita State electing not to double team. Kuznard the rebound, and here comes Bradley. Kuznard from Houston, Texas. O'Geary for Miller. There's another Seton Hall foul inside. That time, uh, Wichita State got the ball inside with the pass. This time, you get the penetration from Bradley. Lang comes over, leaves his man. Bradley's got to be able to recognize that, but that's a tremendous block by Lang. You know David Palmer just picked up the foul. That is the first on the Seton Hall Pirate. Miller at the line. The Seton Hall game plan right at the moment seems to be to play Miller one on one. And if Miller's going to be allowed to back into the basket to take a couple of dribbles to get himself down in the lane, that little hook shot he's got is going to be impossible to stop. Breyer and Nick Rogers come in for Wichita State. Stan Gaines has just come in for Lang for Seton Hall. And Miller has been very impressive earlier. We showed you the numbers, his improvement over the course of his career. Wichita State has four guys who average in double figures, so that 13 points a game isn't bad. Dreyer with the drive, and Martin taps it back in. Martin loves to hang around that rim, the junior. Greg Gumbel in New York, as with all our tournament games, we'll keep tabs for you, but time to get you now to the Minneapolis bracket, the action in Salt Lake City, Pacific against Boston College. Let's take you there live and join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Greg, thanks very much. First of four games here at the John Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. Boston College, the number four seed against 13 seeded Pacific. As we open things up, great day of basketball here in Salt Lake. Winner here will take on the survivor of the Nevada-Montana matchup, which will be coming up here at the Huntsman Center. Take a look at the starting lineups. First for Pacific. They come in as champions of the Big West. Michael White, Anthony Esparza, Christian Moriker, the Big West Player of the Year, Johnny Gray, and Mike Webb in the backcourt. For Boston College, representing the ACC, John Oates, Craig Smith, first team all ACC, Jared Dudley, Lewis Hinnett, the point guard, and the dangerous Sean Marshall at shooting guard. Bob Thomason, well, he's been here before, third straight year at the NCAA tournament for the Pacific Tigers. And for the Boston College Eagles, number four seed here in the Minneapolis bracket, Al Skinner, his team got knocked off in the second round last year. Upset loss to Wisconsin, Milwaukee. We are set to go. Mike Sanzer, Dan Chrisman, Mike Foote, the officials. Boston College controls the tip. We're underway from Salt Lake. In it, in a matchup with Johnny Gray. On the outside, Marshall. Boston College likes to work the interior with the bruiser, Craig Smith, one of the most decorated players in Boston College history. And what they like to do also is use both sides of the floor as we're seeing early on. There's Dudley, shot clock down to 13. They'll reload for Smith in a matchup with White. Fake on the double, Smith, tough move. And good touch around the goal. And a good touch because he's got so much power to get himself in good motion and good position. One thing to look for with Smith is just what we've seen there. A patient attack that they'll have. They'll reload the shot clock and then look for Smith a second and third time to get him on the floor where they're comfortable. The experience of Boston College, they have had the same starting lineup in every game this season. There's Gray out front. He'll stroke it short and rebounded by Dudley. And there's no substitution for experience to touch on that. The fact that these guys are comfortable with one another. Their start is on the floor. Good little deflection right here. Dudley able to hold on to it. Whips it. Now inside, Marshall contact. No call. And the follow-up by Smith cleaning up on the glass. 65% you know, plus field goal percentage this season. Did a real good job in the ACC. This team moving from the Big East, a tough conference, to another one in the ACC, and it did just fine down there. So here's Pacific. The Tigers on the offensive end, trailing 4 nothing. Esparza trying to get Moriker involved. Double team. Nice job by Oates there to step across to force the double team and kick it back out. Seven to shoot. White doesn't look for his offense. Somebody better. Gray, shot clock winding down, corner. Oh, I don't think that hit anything, right? It was an air ball, the first one, and then the follow-up hit underneath the backboard, so it's going to go BC way. 
Well, for Craig Smith, one of two players in Boston College history to record 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds, Donya Abrams, the other, just gives you an indication what kind of career he's had. And Abrams was a little smaller, but boy, the days play very similarly to the fact that they like to get down deep. Another look down to Dudley. And backdoor. Oates finding the open man, and Thomason takes a timeout for Pacific. Thomason. Trailing 6 0. He was concerned about the size down deep. Right now, it's all Boston College early in Salt Lake. It was tremendous in that he adopted. Uh, to one style and yet implemented another in the same year with a veteran team and, and you you said veteran team and that's the key if he was a, had a younger group he'd be able to just trash the old system and bring up everything that he wanted to bring into the mix but these guys have been successful under Pearl system good job of blending the two systems and it's, it's a veteran team that's had success you know if they had gone nowhere that's a different deal but uh, you know as a, as a coach you really have to walk that fine line Taj Gray off the back guy, and Tucker rips it down. You saw that graphic offensively. It's been all book out and little else for Oklahoma. Two for 14 now as a team. Oklahoma and uh, book out has been outstanding. Hasn't missed. Look for Milwaukee to go to Jordan. Tucker right now really the only one on the floor with the ability to score. Tucker will step back move off the front iron. Taken out of there by Everett. Nice, strong move by Terrell Everett. Kelvin Sampson said that he is at his best in a helter-skelter game, getting it up and down the floor, especially in the break situation. Avery Smith, the floater. Oh, that was pretty right there. Yeah. Telling tell the big fella you got to jump a little bit higher on that one. Sophomore from Milwaukee, Avery Smith, logging a lot of playing time with this uh, veteran bunch. Well, you know, Bookout is not a shot blocker. You know, I, I think you can attack him inside. A, a gray maybe a little you have to be wary of. And an illegal pick set by Taj Gray. Terrell Edward has been called the key to Kelvin Sampson's team. The young man from Charleston, South Carolina, shows you a little crossover there. BC with a 6-0 lead. The concerns coming into this game, Jimmy, for Pacific. Did they have enough to deal with Boston College on the inside? And the answer so far has been no. Uh, no, and the fact of the matter is it's very aggressive down deep, too, and that was the other part of their concern. Nice strip out front by Hinnett. They're just really in control here from both aspects, defensively and offensively. Hinnett able to take it away from Johnny Gray, and now they'll set up their offense with a 6-0 lead on the 13th seeded Tigers. You ask the question type of thing, what do you do if you're Pacific to stop them from down deep? Watch them run their flex offense. A lot of motion, a lot of screens, and they're very patient. In it, extra pass, Dudley knocks it down. Now how about Marshall That's catching the ball be. along the baseline and quickly recognizing that he was not open and then flipped it out from what perceived to be a good spot to go up. They're very unselfish, they kick it around the corner. Now Pacific just trying to get on the board. Gray looks down low. Dudley draws the assignment on Moriker. Nice little zone look right now. Here's Esparza. He's got a funky game. Ball stripped away and another steal for BC. Oates went down in a heap and slow to get up for the Eagles. Well, the last two years, Pacific knocked off, respectively, Providence in the first round and then Pittsburgh last year two Big East teams, Bob Thomason told his team, hey, pretend BC is still in the Big East. <laughs> I thought that was a good line. That's the way we're thinking of it, that they're a Big East team. But, but they are working. No, they're from the ACC now, and it's working pretty well for them. Along the baseline, Dudley rims out, and Morica able to clean it. Yeah, just a little bit of a float just then by Dudley to his right towards the middle of the lane, rather than throwing the shoulders towards the basket was the reason that shot rolled out for him. Pacific, three turnovers over its last three possessions. And we're four minutes gone by here in the first. Moriker can't get the banker. Esparza knocked it over to White, who gets the deuce. Oh, and it's a big time relief. It's the ball goes through the basket finally. When you're looking at the scoreboard, and it's 2 nothing, 4 nothing, 8 nothing, And all of a sudden, Pacific a little bit more Calm down a little bit. And Smith right now checking things over. Would he get poked in the eye possibly? He did. Hitting? He yeah. took a shot underneath in that scrap for the loose ball. And Smith is now heading to the sideline for BC. So we'll step aside. 15-49 to play in this first half. Boston College in front, 8-2. 
Well, they have had three consecutive 20 win seasons. They have been at the NIT the last three years. Lost inside, good defense by Whitney. Lang picked it up. Copeland trying to convert on the other end. Look at the defense by Miller, who had to watch two players, including Whitney, who beat him that time. Well, I do not understand how Copeland was able to make that pass. It looked to me like he had no options, but that's what a great point card can do for you sometime, particularly one with the experience that Copeland has. It's Bradley and Wilson and Miller from Jefferson City, Missouri. Kusnar with a little dance on Lane. And they've got this stroke. Wichita State has knocked down four threes. They're shooting over 45%, and they are out rebounding Seton Hall by eight. Well, they're doing a great job on the offensive boards, and Kuznard, that was a tough shot. The freshman guards. Bill Meyer with the rebound. The captain put up the foul and couldn't get it. And Wilson is there to grab it. He's a junior out of Plano, Texas, and averaging six rebounds a game for the Shockers. And that was a good defensive effort by Miller inside. Lots of times you see a foul on that offensive rebounding situation. Miller against Bill Meyer. Boy, that was too Boy. easy for the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. They and he has eight points. They have got to do something, Kevin, to put some pressure on Miller. He just has all day to stand in there, get his position, turn around, take that nice, smooth shot. Lang and Copeland for three. Donald Copeland. And Mark Turgeon telling his guys, look, unless you're sure, don't go for that steal because one of his players ran out of the play. Everybody's scrambling to recover. They left Copeland wide open. And Copeland's a guy you cannot leave open from out there, a 40% three-point shooter. And that is a Wichita State foul. Kuznar going to pick up the foul. He was trying to get open and trying to swim his way out of that traffic. <laughs> Kuznar picks up his second. It's been all Shocker basketball so far. Uh, Davis. Who Davis? Very quick with the launch. He's already hit a couple of threes. Out of bounds to Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Steven Oklahoma going a little zone right here, and I thought that that was a quick jump shot by Davis, one that you could probably get at any time during the shot clock. I like the fact that Oklahoma is going zone to give Milwaukee a little bit different look, try to get them off the rhythm somewhat. David Godbold has come back into the game, along with Mike Kaminsky and Stephen Bardo. Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. First round action in the Minneapolis bracket. And Wisconsin-Milwaukee with a five-point lead. Godbold comes away with a rebound as Davis took it in strong. There's Bookout. That's a walk. Took the extra step in anticipation of receiving the ball. And there are going to be a lot of those today coming over the top of this pressure. And you, you notice that teams that like to press don't necessarily get back on defense very well. Book out taking advantage just got called for the steps. And, and Stephen, I think if, if you're um, Rob Jeter, you're concerned that book out beats your entire team up the floor. Uh, that's, not, that's not a good sign in transition. No disrespect to, to <laughs> Kevin, but I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't characterize him as a burner. That's right. Tucker, a fall away. Joe Tucker. This is one of those young men that could play just about anywhere in any league. Think Bradley still wishes they had him? Absolutely. He <laughs> averaged 25. He averaged 25 points in the three games in the NCAAs last year. Sooner's uh, hitting that offensive wall at times in the last four possessions, three turnovers. Taylor Griffin, the freshman that's in right now to four position. Very talented and skilled, has the ability to change the game. Davis with the rebound with the outlet to Tucker. Tucker gets it back. Oh, a rainbow from up high. Timeout, Sooners. And Wisconsin Milwaukee has its largest lead of the day. A 7 nothing run. Here's the look up ahead and uh, book out getting out in transition. They need more of that to get back in this one. And Wisconsin Milwaukee lead by double digits. He banged heads with Esparza. Nice tip there by Johnson to kick it out. And Webb is open for a three. 
Webb, well, another guy who can shoot the ball from long range at 42% shooter, so he has a, the ability to get long shots off also. But good work just then to kick that ball out by Johnson with that little flick pass. Couldn't get it, but knew his offensive teammate was standing there. Eagles lead it 13 to 7. Just about seven minutes gone by in this first half in Salt Lake. Dudley, tight defense as far as that. Looking over at the BC bench, and Smith looks like he's ready to get off the bench over there to get in. Six to shoot. Dudley out of position. Shot clock down to two. Marshall doesn't know it, or does he? On a turnaround, rebounded by Esparza. You can see Marshall just at the end there. A little good communication by the Eagles because he got a call and he looked up at the other clock. Moriker, and a foul call. And our first one of the day. As Morica was able to get inside, Smith ready to check back in. And we'll see big changes for Pacific as well as Johnny Gray returns. Foul called on McLean. That's his first for BC. Also checking in, Anthony Brown for Pacific. Good looking six foot seven inch freshman from Sacramento, California. Morica fouled and a chance for three on a jump hook. Sean Williams that time a little late on the reaction. You always want to force the ball away from the middle of the floor, the paint, when you're defending underneath. And they really set it up well, but there's the body. He could not establish himself defensively, and Williams with a little bump. So Williams picks up the foul, and Moriker to the free throw line, 85% shooter. He's been such a sturdy big man in his four years as a member of the Tigers program. Tyrese Rice, change of pace point guard, has checked in for BC, the little lefty from Richmond, Virginia. Change of pace are three good words to describe him because he will get it and go with it. Here's Williams for BC. There is a bunch of the cuts. Just watch for the it's more than exchanges. It's supposed to be setting screens for one another. Hit it. Oh, he's been such a great leader for this Boston College team. We talked to Al Skinner about Hinnett. He said, tremendous team player. He's been the same guy from day one when he stepped onto the campus four years ago out of Oxon Hill, Maryland. And he led the ACC in the assist to turnover ratio. So not a bad guy to have handling the ball. Very experienced. Moriker looking more comfortable. It rims out, but the follow goes down. Right place at the right time for Joe Ford, the freshman from Altadena, California. He's got a major wingspan at six foot six. And Pacific has gotten their legs under them here in the first 10 minutes of the first half. Down low. How about Hennett on a post up? And he's going to the free throw line. And I'll show you a little mix up there. Huh? Defensively not reacting well, but Hennett showing his smarts to use his six foot four frame to catch and go on the little post up. Now the strength of Boston College, but they can beat you off the dribble as well. Timeout. And Copeland is a guy that's really got to make some things happen. He not only is the leading scorer, but he's the point guard, and his job is to get the ball to people in positions where they can score, and Seton Hall struggling to score right now. Bradley with the miss, rebounded inside by Kelly Whitney, his sixth rebound of the game so far for the Pirates. Copeland will take it, and a little hand check is thrown on him by Sean O'Geary of Wichita State, picking up the foul, and O'Geary tagged with his first. Well, Copeland, a pretty high basketball IQ, understands that he's got to make something happen. That was the last position where he drove the ball through the double team and was able to score. That time he drew the foul on the penetration. So look for Copeland to do a little bit more dribble penetration to the basket. Copeland's dad was a coach. That's the IQ you're talking about. Here inside, they got Whitney. A senior from Chicago, picked up by Martin. And now Breyer. Breyer is a guy that just seems to always be playing under control, Kevin. I think that's one of the reasons why this Wichita State offense has been so effective early. Oh, Gary Knox in another. He averaged 17 points in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. He's knocked down three of five above the arc this afternoon already. Well, they're doing a great job moving players and moving the ball, and there Copeland gets another foul on the penetration. But Bradley with the basketball, you can see O'Geary at the top of your screen. They're coming off that screen underneath the basket. Just nice job moving the ball. 
As you mentioned before, a 44% three-point shooter. Martin will check out, and Kyle Wilson comes back in for the Shockers. And Palmer is taking the place of Whitney in there for Seton Hall. Gauze has come back in as well. And Jamar Nutter, Dwayne Palmer. There's Bill Meyer with the ball. And Copeland for three. He has been about as steady a player as you've seen so far. He's got eight. And Copeland has scored the last eight points for the Pirates. Well, we were talking about Copeland needing to do something and knocking down two threes and that little runner in the lane. Now the Pirates have to get some defensive stops. Things have been much too easy on the offensive end for Wichita State. O'Geary, another three. Good! He's knocked down four in the first half. And Wichita State equals their biggest lead so far of 15. Boy, the Shockers doing a great job finding the open players. And Copeland trying to find some open room in the lane. He's trying to find a foul right there. The great swagger and confidence Wichita State has played with so far in this game against the Big East Seton Hall Pirates. Trying to spin inside is Miller. Bill Meyer picks up a pirate foul. Wichita State has knocked down six three-point shots. Now Kevin Book out is it for Oklahoma, and you've got to keep going to him until the Panthers figure out a way to stop him inside. Tucker. Not this time, Taj Gray. Boy, the block out and the uh, vertical leap all there with him. Everett, little stop and go past McCoy. Finger roll that won't go. And McCoy clears it for Milwaukee. That was a good job of Neal that time coming back and jamming the outlet pass of Hill. The outlet pass is what makes this Milwaukee fast break go. Good job by Neal. Tigert, who had been injured, uh, makes a real difference when he's on the floor for the Panthers. There's Tucker on the offensive boards, unable to convert. And a little Marcus Haynes act by Godbold to make sure he retained possession. And it's not so much Tigert scoring, Stephen, but a lot of the offense runs through him when he's in the low post. The perimeter players do a good job of cutting and moving when he has the ball. Look at that, fellas. The rest of the team, 5 of 19. That's the first miss for Bookout. He's 5 of 6. The rest of the Sooners, 5 of 19. Smith got caught in midair, turned it over. Everett leaving it for Bookout, and that's going to be a block against the Panthers. Chris Hill trying to get back, and he's tagged with the foul in the second. Everett was very fortunate. Was out of control. Looked like a charge to me, Mike. Uh, 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 he, he looked like he had uh, he took it right on the chest and was clearly an established defensive guarding position. And Rob Jeter has that uh, sarcastic smile as he discusses matters with uh, Jerry Meter, one of the officials. Hardest call in the game, isn't it? Yeah. Has been and forever will be, I suppose. The block charge. Well, I just uh, now I, I think with the athletes today, they're so fast that things happen so quickly. It's tough to. You know, you don't want to, you never want to beat the referees up in that situation <laughs> until you've stood out there with a whistle in your mouth. Off the ball, McCoy and Taj Gray were tied up. And Jason McCoy, senior from Houston, Milby High School, and a Rutgers transfer, picks up the foul. You know, Mike, early in the game, you mentioned with the lob to Joe Tucker, there was no ball pressure. We're seeing a similar situation with Milwaukee. They're able, Oklahoma's able to get the ball inside anytime they want. Boo Davis and Hanson are going to really have to pressure the pass to allow McCoy and Ford to play effective defense on the interior. There's, there's, there's nothing worse than a, a, a post defender working hard and then having the perimeter be lazy so that you could get that easy look in. Shot clock winding down. Longar, Longar is coming to the game replacing Bookout. And there's Godbolt with a runner off the glass. The lead to plus 10, down to three now. Another 9-2 run, this one for Oklahoma in the last four minutes. Three of difficulty, 9.9 on that run by Godbold. Going out of bounds off the glass. It also allows you to get back in transition much easier. They had five white jerseys back, and they forced the Panthers to get into their half-court set. Ford, Longar, Longar tried for the, uh, the foul, and uh, 
the display was simply a flop and Kelvin Sampson a little upset with him for attempting that. 28 to 23. Those are bonus points for the Panthers. Oh, Gray took a step after Wisconsin. Milwaukee had gone to sleep. He just anticipated it. Sometimes you can have too many hops. And in this case, Todd Gray's got that, right? Uh oh. Too much lift. No need for the vertical there, Taj. We'll be right back. What they have from New York. Dwyer. Wilson. Wichita State continues to have a lot of player movement on the offensive end, and that's really difficult to guard. Miller gets the feed from O'Geary. Right, it's just a very simple play, a screen, and then Miller cuts to the basket. Both of the defenders step toward O'Geary because he's established the fact that if you give him that three, he's going to make it. But what a nice catch by Miller. Seton Hall in the NCAA tournament for the second time in three years. Wichita State has not been in the tournament since 1988. Palmer puts up a heavily contested shot inside. And Kevin, I think that's been the key to the first half this year. Much more heavily contested on that end than this end. Wendell Freedom, a 6-1 freshman from Houston. Everybody is getting in the act for Wichita State on an 8-0 run and with their biggest lead today. Maybe not the greatest of decisions by as far as they're going down the floor just then, especially when you're scrambling to get back in, you're trying to get your rhythm. That was a difficult layup, even though from a lefty's perspective, the lefty is hard to really guard. He's a great hustler, though, for this team, really works at it as they come with a 2-1-2 two, two look right now, back to a 1-2-2. Two, two. Esparza, the scrappy junior from Bakersfield, California, one of six junior college transfers on this Tigers team. Again, you get this look of a zone right now. It's a man-to-man -man when the ball is in your area, but look at down below how many black shirts try to find their way into the paint. There's a good shot of it right there with three down deep. Seven to shoot. Williams on a bounce. Dudley sneaks it inside. And Smith with a shot clock down to two. That's brute strength. Doesn't it help to always have good hands, too, before you finish it off with that brute strength? Wow. He really catches the ball when it's around him. He's got like vacuum cleaner hands. And then he's tough to move once he gets the ball in his <laughs> oh, hands. Forget about moving. <laughs> Back door, pull up. Webb tried to go off the glass. Esparza kept it alive for BC. Eagles in front, 24-17. Esparza the only guy on the offensive glass. This is not a team you can go one against four down deep. Eagles deliberate on the offensive end. Here's Smith out front. They'll give Williams that shot. He won't take it. Not known for his offense. Offensively back to the man-to-man. -man. Let's see if BC patiently waits. Uh, good hands. At Johnny Gray. Diving to the sideline, trying to save it. Out of bounds with 7.32 to go in this first half. Boston College leading Pacific. We're coming back to Salt Lake in a moment. Here's a Wichita State foul. That was a nice little two-man game by Seton Hall there. Gauze and Whitney working together against Miller and Breyer, and Breyer trying to drop down inside to help out and then come back out and pick up Gauze. Gauze used his quickness to draw the foul, and that's a couple now on Breyer, isn't it? Breyer two fouls on Breyer. Second. So Gauze will be at the free throw line for Seton Hall. A look at Mark Turgeon. We told you as we tipped off our game, the Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year. He was a player for Larry Brown at Kansas and then coached there in that 88 championship team for the Jayhawks and then continued when Roy Williams took over Kansas as an assistant coach. Now that's quite a coaching background and Mark Turgeon very happy to see that you can see there's his resume if you'll be very happy to see the lane violation by Seton Hall so they do not get the free throw. Good pick up by Copeland. Gauze inside and beautifully fed to James Nutter. And when Nutter scores, there is a ripple effect in the entire offense. There sure is. An important buckets for Seton Hall. They're trying to cut into this lead. This tournament news plus singular Naismith watch update all coming up on singular at the half. No better place for anyone to be on a day like this, right? And we've got a tie ball this time. The arrow does belong to Oklahoma. 
Well, with all due respect, I think your two partners would still like to be out there playing a little bit. That, that, <laughs> that, that, this is a close second, but uh, the guys out on the floor, that's the best seat in the house. Uh, at the end of the day, I'll have you sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Book out, takes the pass, a long one again, and it's kicked out of bounds by Boo Davis. Interesting tack that Oklahoma has taken, Stephen, in this press, and they've tried to throw that home run pass a lot of times just completely over the top and almost put Book out in a bind that time. And we see Book out looks like he injured that hand. Yep. Only in the first half, the, the Missouri Valley Conference representative Wichita State has played very, very well. But the Missouri Valley Conference is a great league, a great history, great tradition. They had six teams in the top 40 NCAA power rankings. So they had certainly cast their shadow long and hard over the landscape of college basketball this season. Miller double teamed and in a straight jacket couldn't get it out. Kuzan comes up at the Seton Hall rebound. It's the first time this afternoon we've seen Miller force anything. Gauze contract and inside he goes with Whitney. Boy, Seton Hall just has not been able to get that inside shot to go. Whitney in particular struggling there. Now only three of ten shooting. In his defense, they haven't been open shots. Wichita State doing a very nice job contesting everything Seton Hall's trying to do. Lang comes back in the game, and Nutter's going at. Wichita State is plus six in rebounding so far in the game. The Fury's been terrific. Final seconds of the first half. Gauze on O'Geary and a great steal by the freshman Gauze trying to beat the buzzer and cannot. Which takes us to halftime. 40-24. The seventh seed Shockers, Greg Gumbel, on top of the Big East Pirates of Seton Hall. All right, Kevin, thank you. Meanwhile, in Jacksonville. Coming up on two and a half minutes to play in the first half there. Oklahoma trailing Wisconsin-Milwaukee by four. Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, Stephen Bardo are there. Two and change remaining here in the opening half. Wisconsin-Milwaukee has led by as many as 10 in the game, 24-14. It's been a game of runs, a 9-2 run followed by a 9-0 run. The answer is coming from Milwaukee, mostly because of the outstanding play inside of Kevin Bookout, who is sitting down right now after re-aggravating his wrist injury from way back in January. But Tim, I think Oklahoma's done a nice job at the steal right there of grabbing a hold of the tempo of this game in the second 10 minutes here. Ever oh. the alley Longar gets Longar <laughs> and puts it in, it's 29-27. Boy, Terrell Everett is showing us what he is made of in this first half. We've seen an assortment of runners and lob pass to his big bigs for easy buckets. And uh, Neal with the defensive pressure forces the timeout from Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Bookout looking to check back into the game. As we mentioned, he aggravated that injury a moment ago. How about a little plastic man extension from the man called Longar? We'll be right back. If you're a new show, don't miss a new episode Tuesday after NCIS on CBS, America's number one network. Dudley, 70% shooter out of San Diego, California. Always seems to play with that chip on his shoulder because he was not heavily recruited coming out of high school. And what an impact player he has been in his three years at BC. Coming into this game, he only had 1,400 and change with the total points, so <laughs> he's put together a nice career already. There's Morica on a drop step. He's fouled, trying to turn baseline. John Oates will get called for the personal. His first. And the 14 foul against the Eagles. 